Hello everyone, welcome back to Marketing Analytics. I'm sure many of you have complained. I am a marketing major. Why do I need to take this finance course? So many numbers out there. And in today's topic, we're going to look at something in marketing that is pertinent to finance, the customer lifetime value or CLV. And I hope throughout this lecture, you will be able to realize that all of these topics you learn in a business school are interconnected. They're all related to each other and having a comprehensive understanding of different topics will really help you understand marketing better. Enjoy. In this video, we will discuss customer lifetime value. This concept defines how much profit a customer generates for the business throughout the lifetime that the customer is with the business. An example would be something like Netflix, where a subscriber would pay fees to Netflix, and this fee over time would aggregate up to a customer lifetime value, or CLV. We are almost halfway through the semester, so let me give you an overview of where are we. So first we have talked about different types of common revenue generating models. That is how companies make money. First, we talked about advertising. So companies like Facebook or Google, they offer free content to attract users. And then because users are there, they can earn money through advertising. And then of course, companies can charge directly for content. And for that, we have already talked about transaction-based businesses where we can conduct customer profiling. We can also segment customers based on behavior. So that's what we have covered so far. And today's focus is on a different way to charge for content, especially for subscription-based business. And the focal concept that we will discuss today is customer lifetime value. A question I want to pose for you is why is subscription so popular? And we have Disney Plus, Netflix, and Microsoft Office, Spotify, and Zoom. They all charge through subscription. And especially for Microsoft Office, which used to be sold as individual software, Nowadays, Microsoft has migrated the office business into a subscription-based business. So the question is, why is subscription so popular these days? To answer that question, let's take a look at how subscription works. So a Netflix premium customer pays Netflix $19.99 a month. So let's say $20 a month. So that's $240 a year. And that means in the first year, the customer would pay Netflix $240. And again, in the second year, and again, in the third year, the fourth year, and it goes on. This is almost boring. However, it is great for business because in a subscription-based model, we have a revenue stream that comes in predictably at $240 a year. It goes on and on. For a subscription, we have repeated predictable cash flow. That is the default option in a subscription-based business. Transaction-based business, on the other hand, would have to worry about whether customer will buy in each time period because it's not guaranteed that the customer would come back. So subscription is almost like a customer is handing us money on a schedule. This is the biggest advantage of subscription-based business. We have repeated predictable cash flow. Now the question is, how much value does a customer generate for us? So that's when the concept of customer lifetime value comes in. Here we have a cash flow of 240 each year. The question is, can we just sum it up? 240 plus 240 plus 240, it goes on and on all the way to infinite? Not quite. That is because money has time value. This is something you have learned in your finance course. And there are more factors we need to be concerned about 
because number one, the customer base might grow. And number two, customers may not be fully loyal to our business. Customers may actually deviate to competitors or stop subscription altogether. So we have to consider these factors. That's why to calculate CLV, we need to pay attention to three components for customer lifetime value. And we have now is better than the future, sure is better than uncertain, and more is better than less. Let me elaborate. So first, now is better than the future. And let's assume we're in a world where the interest rate, so if you have money, you can earn an interest rate by purchasing the US government bond, let's say 10%. So the time value of money is 10% every year. Let's say now you have $10. And then if you are earning a 10% interest rate, a year later, you're going to have $10 times 1 plus 10%. So your money of $10 would be multiplied into 110%. That gives you $11. So this is basically how compound interest rate works. So from year one over time, you are going to aggregate this money. And then by year six, you are going to have $17.70. So that is the time value of money. It means $10 now is worth $17.70 six years later. So fee collected from the future is not worth as much as fee collected now. That means fee collected from the future should be discounted when we calculate the customer lifetime value now. So here's how we discount this. At a 10% annual interest rate, so $10 now is equal to 17.7 six years later. That is $10 six years later should be discounted by 10 at a rate of 10 divided by 17.7. So that is only worth $5.70 now. So essentially, we are calculating the net present value of a stream of cash flow. So that is something you have learned from your finance course. And here, as you can see, we are using this same concept in marketing. So we are going to discount the future cash flow from subscription by doing an MPV calculation. The second component of CLV is sure is better than uncertain. The market condition changes and the customers are not always with us. That is customers would leave and they stop subscribing our service. So CLV must factor in how long they stay. So the term we use for customers leaving us is called a churn. So it's basically customers leaking out. And we have customers leaving. We have to factor that in. And here's the example. CLV with uncertainty or churn. So let's say now we have a customer who pays us $10. And on average, 20% of the customers leave our subscription. So after one year, what we have is, although each customer on average pays us $10, 20% of them are no longer with us. Our average of $10 is expected to drop because we have fewer customers. So on average, that 10 becomes eight after a year and it goes on and on. So by the end of six years, following this line of calculation, at 20% churn rate, a $10 customer now, who is certainly with us, has only a value of $2.60 six years later, because whether they are with us is uncertain. And also a concept we use to factor in churn is that if a churn rate is 20%, then the retention rate is basically one minus the churn rate at 80%. So we retain the customers who do not churn. And the third component is more is better than less. If we can increase the subscription fee, then customers will pay us more in each time period that would increase 
the customer lifetime value. Of course, we can grow the customer base to increase the total customer lifetime value, and we may be able to improve our pricing by offering multi-tier fee structure through segmentation, which we're going to talk a little bit more in the coming weeks. So again, the three components of CLV are now is better than the future, sure is better than uncertain, and more is better than less. I will show you in separate videos how to calculate CLV in Excel. So now let's say you already have the CLV calculated. The question is, how do you use CLV? Here are a couple examples. So first, let's say a video streaming company calculates its customer lifetime value CLV to be $360. So the video streaming company is planning to provide a one month free trial. In order to reach the customers, the company has to advertise the free trial all over the place. So running the free trial ads would cost $300 per customer. That's a customer acquisition cost. And the free trial itself with all the operating cost would cost $3 per customer. Now the question is, is the free trial worth offering? So that is where we apply CLV to make that decision on whether to run this free trial. So in this example, it's straightforward that if your CLV is $360, the cost of acquisition is 300 plus three, that's 303. So 360 is larger than 303. So running this advertising campaign and free trial is worth it because your CLV is larger than the cost. So that's one application of using CLV to make marketing decisions. Here's a second example from customer value to firm value. Again, the video streaming company calculates its CLV to be $360. And let's say this streaming company has 150 million subscribers and it is pretty much a mature company that has stopped growing. So the customer base may stay relatively stable at 150 million. So now recall the concepts you learned from your finance course that a firm's value or a company's value is basically its total net present value. So the whole profit stream that the company has generated through its lifetime. Now, we already have the CLV of an individual customer. All we need to do is to multiply that into the total number of subscribers. 360 times 150 million gives us $54 billion. So that, in theory, would be the company's market capital or how much the company is worth. If interested, of course, you can calculate Netflix subscribers CLV. Keep in mind that Netflix has multiple segments. You have to calculate them separately. And then you'll be able to come up with a firm value for Netflix. That's all for CLV. Thank you and keep up the good work.